Mark. This is my partner, Kirsten. And we have Steve Richards and Jim Pearson, our Steve Richards Tributes Band. Welcome to Coffee Talk. Thanks for having us this early in the morning. Six o'clock, isn't it? It's super early. You can see yeah, the sun yeah. breaking through. Okay. I like that. <laughs> now, um, you are coming to us because you're going to play a tribute show at uh, the fabulous 210 restaurant and live music lounge, but you have a deep history in rock and roll. Yes, I do. Yes. I used to do photography for about 20 years and um, getting at the, as they say, uh, the great years when you had the superstars or the people that were just coming up. And um, once you get over the, um, the hero worshiping, uh, you get to know them and get to talk with them and find out that, uh, you know, they are creative, but they're just down to earth and you learn a lot from them. So that was part of uh, being in photography is being able to not only do shots of them that you can't get anywhere, but also be able to get to know them and find out really where their inspiration comes from and, and how how creative they really are. Because it's, it's, it's really un unbelievable some of the people I've met. And uh, what, do you, what do you think you learned from about John Lennon that people didn't get right away? <laughs> John was exactly what everybody thought he was. He was um, a genius. He was arrogant because he was a genius. And he was, you know, he didn't care if people liked his music or didn't after a while when he became, you know, uh, aside from the Beatles. But that was what made him so special is that he talked his mind and said whatever he wanted to say, and if you didn't like it, that was it. And um, he, he came off very, very um, um, brass, or brash, whatever the word is. And uh, after a while, we broke down, and um, I was supposed to do an interview, uh, which I did for a college paper I was working with. And <clears throat> we did pictures over at the Merchandise Mart in Chicago. And then he said, can we do the interview later? That sort of thing. <laughs> and I said, um, Sure. And he goes, because he had to go to do the Dick Cavett show. And he had a limousine waiting right at the door. So his manager came over to me and said, uh, what time do you want John to call you on Saturday? <laughs> and I was like, okay. He goes, well, if you don't want to do that, why don't I just give you his number? Yeah. And he gave me his home number. Oh, my God. And on Saturday <laughs> afternoon, yeah, I mean, just, just yeah, wrote John it down. Lennon's phone number he said, here friend, it is. Yeah. And call him on Saturday between 2 and 3 because he's in New York. And uh, I said, you know, and I was like, you know, couldn't believe it. And then we called and talked with him, and he's, you know, you know, so what's going on, mate? That sort of thing. <laughs> and just down to earth, and, you know, you could hear him drag it off his cigarette and stuff, and I'm not sure if that sort of thing is going to really work, and I'm all, you know, <laughs> when I was with Paul, and that sort of thing, you know. And after a while, um, you know, he said, I really enjoyed this sort of thing. And I said, well, that's great. And he said, you know, why don't you give me a call once in a while, just for giggles. And once in a while, I would give him a call, and um, we'd just talk, and he'd say, I'm in the kitchen here trying to figure out how to make uh, potato pancakes. Do you have any idea? And I'm like, I have no idea, John. I'm not really, you know. I don't cook. I don't cook. So, so what Steve did, he said, well, well just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very good. Good. very good. Very good. But yeah, and uh, I learned a lot from him about just, you know, whatever comes to your mind, write it down quickly. And he said uh, he didn't even really know half the stuff. Uh, was going to be taken so literally people read into songs and stuff he mm -hmm. says it's just words yeah. but because of who he was and the fact that he had traveled all over the world and with the Maharishi and they all did uh, they're just amazing people they were ahead of their time w with groups and I love the Rolling Stones mm -hmm. uh, and Mick is great but they, they, they always are who they are the Beatles went from yeah, yeah, yeah to let it be. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. drove me, wow. It just kept evolving. And God knows if they were still together today, what kind of music they'd be turning out or John would. Yeah. Honey, you see, John, he had his freedoms. He just said what he felt like. He didn't hold back. <laughs> Nothing. So are I you, can't even tell you some of the things he said to me. Are you telling me I should not hold back? No, no, you bet. You yeah, should probably I best hold, hold back. back. Yeah. <laughs> I should not say what's on they my mind Yoko most of the time. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're the Yoko, okay? I'm the Yoko, yeah. Uh huh. And so, uh, and so you have some other amazing photographs here. Yeah. Uh, I worked with Elton when he was 26 years old and known him since he's been 26. And the guy was just, didn't realize his potential either. I mean, you know, he just, 
one of these people that just take themselves, he knew he was good, he said, but he didn't know, you know, what was going to happen. But uh, as time went on, he, he kept, you know, getting better and better and better. They all do. That's what makes them great. That's why they're, they're legends, like Neil Diamond is. Neil Diamond, you know, can still sell out 30,000 seats a night or whatever, and he's 76 years old. That's yeah. So, isn't that wild you know. that he's that old already? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. what is it about Neil Diamond that makes people go nuts? I got to tell you that I just played uh, a restaurant in town, and this woman says, you know, I haven't seen your band here before. I'm here all the time. And what every band does for me is they play a Neil Diamond song. Mm. <laughs> I know I'm crazy, but I'm going to be your super fan playing Neil Diamond song for me. It's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so did you. <laughs> We promised her the next time. We, Did yeah. you? Yeah. They want to hear Sweet Caroline. No matter what age, I found that out. You know, we played. Yeah, you know, we, we played a place. I forget what it was downtown, and like nineteen or twenty year old guys there and stuff. And we were, you know, just getting through the the morning. And all of a sudden, you play Sweet Caroline, and the place just you know went yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So everybody knows that song, no matter what age you are. You know, Sweet Caroline took on such a, a thing because the little Red Sox use it. Mm-hmm. Yep. But when we yep. used to do it, it, it was not all, you know, people doing the wave and going bump, bump, bump every time you, you know, I do this. But, yeah. uh, but now it is. It's out of control. Yeah, yeah it's it really evolved And when something. we played to younger crowds, uh, we played at Duffy's Tavern. Duffy's, Parker that was it. Years ago. Right. It was mostly kids from Michigan State University. And, yeah. You know, we're sitting there and, <laughs> and the only thing that they really wanted to hear was that and then the whole place just went berserk you know, so we, we thought we were going to be killed but we didn't <laughs> yeah, so, but, the, but they, had, they had registered so somewhere along yeah. the line this took on this whole iconic yeah. way with people so all these artists that you've rubbed up against in your career they've all influenced you yeah, in some what way. you're doing right. and obviously Neil Diamond Yeah. because your trivia to him is pretty spot on yeah we, we try to give people um, the same kind of feel and the um, same kind of excitement that they would see if they see him at 30,000 seat auditorium. That's what people really want. They want to show because if not, they'd be listening to the records. Right. And uh, I've heard other people say, well, we don't imitate Neil Diamond or something like that. And they dress like him. Mm-hmm. They have their hair like him. Uh, they're doing the songs like him, but they're not impersonating mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, come on, you know, it, it, you, you know, you call a duck a duck. In 70 and 71, he revamped to get a really big band. He took uh, Mac Davis's touring guitar player made him a tango player. Mm-hmm. He got yeah. Richie Bennett out of Phoenix, Arizona, was a great steel pedal steel player and could play everything with strings. And then he got a bigger band. Well, the guys that he got then, after the movie The Jazz Singer, then that expanded to this yeah. giant thing he's got today. Yeah. So we've, over the years, you try and evolve to what he's doing currently, but it's like with the Elvis impersonators, they're going with the, the, the same jumpsuit that he wore for yeah. a few years, <laughs> yeah. and that's the time frame. You're right. right. Um, you, you try and keep up the best you can. I mean, the music is going to be uh, as exciting as it is in concert. Uh, we have a lot of surprises because it's Neil Diamond and Friends, so I'm not just going to do Neil Diamond. I'm going to shift into Elton John. I'm going to shift into some Garth, if people like Garth, because he is very, very you know eclectic. Um, maybe some Barry Manilow. So again, we're going to do the people that uh, love songs are very important, I think. And we'll do some rock and roll naturally, of course, because people want to hear Cherry Cherry and they want to hear Thank the Lord for the Nighttime. But the, the basic of the show is uh, just give people a good time and forget your problems and watch what I do and uh, see how I go into a little bit of a zone. And with Diamond, his stuff is always personal, what he's gone through in his life. Um, I am, I said, I found out what that was about, thanks to Jim. Um, he tried out for the part of uh, Lenny, and he got turned down, and Dustin Hoffman got the movie of Lenny Bruce. But he came to California with all the hopes, and he had to try out for it, and then they said, you know, he did a screen test, didn't work out, went back to his trailer, was very depressed whether he should be in California or not. Mm-hmm. And then he wrote, I am, I said, in the, in the trailer. Mm-hmm. What a classic song. Yeah. yeah. Thank Thanks you so much for coming. Yeah. We had a great time. No coffee. <laughs> it's Coffee Cup Productions. I figured there'd be one huge coffee cup that at the table. Yeah. 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 And you just dip into it and just, there you know. You like, you know. We actually do have, uh, yeah, we actually do have a picture. It's uh, the red light is still going. Okay. <laughs> if, if the mugs arrive before we play. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we won't leave and let's get a mug. Yeah, yeah. that's right. We're, yeah, we'll we're, get you. Yeah, we're gonna get a Not big, a problem. We're gonna get gonna some be best mugs. Yeah. You're gonna get your retroactive mug. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We didn't you say that before the, the show? Types may not have bottoms. Though. <laughs> For the show, we have a coffee cup uh, sequence shirt on. Oh, there. very cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Awesome. We had do a great time. Do you think we could squeeze a Neil Diamond song sure. out before you go? I think. She was morning and I was nighttime. When they woke up, to find her lying beside my bed I softly said Come take me For I've been lonely He needed someone As though I'd done someone wrong somewhere I don't know where I don't know where Come lately You are the sun, I am the moon You are the words, I am the tune Play me You are the sun, I am the moon You are the words, I am the tune Play me Very nice. You are. Thank very, you. Very Thank nice. you guys. Thank you That's so much. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, we hope to see everybody out on the uh, the night to have some fun and just uh, That's right. rock it's and roll going to be uh, Thursday, May 11th, live at 210 Restaurant in Highwood. I hear the food is sensational, yeah. so we're going to have to eat. Yes. Yeah. You're gonna have to eat. You're going to have to eat, and you're going to have to get a story from Chef Jeff on what... Chef Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Chef Jeff. <laughs> Chef Jeff. He, he, Does um, the dishwasher's name <laughs> rhyme, too? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, he's always got something interesting to let you know about. I love fish. If you've got from. fish.